Thank you for joining us for a message from Vision Church. We hope that you can experience God in a real and powerful way today. Our teaching team has crafted a message that will be able to impact you no matter what stage of life you're in. So grab your Bible and something to write with and let's dive into God's Word together. If you're grateful for the presence of God today, if God has brought you from your Egypt and He took you by the hand, and let you into that promised land. We lift up a shout of praise today. Dear God, we love your name. God, we thank you for what you've done, for who you are, for what you did on the cross for us, for paying the price that we couldn't pay, for dying a death that you didn't deserve for raising from a grave that people said would be impossible, and that because of that one act, God, we have complete victory, complete deliverance, complete healing, all in the name of Jesus. We thank you for that power today, God. We love you. We praise you. And all God's people said, amen. You guys can take a seat. Y'all are on fire. Y'all are on fire this morning. There is such a hunger for God's presence. Yeah, let's say for a second. There's such a hunger for God's presence in this room. I was standing off to the side, and typically before I preach, I like to be a little calm so I don't choke and so my throat is, is all good. But y'all, I was dancing. I couldn't, I couldn't hold it in. I saw y'all dancing. I saw someone over here just got free from their Egypt this morning. And I said, I need to dance. I need to join them with that. So you guys, the church is on fire for the Lord. At this point, the kids are dismissed to Viz Kids. You guys have some great things in store. Your leaders are on it today, and you are going to hear about the love of God going through a purpose-driven life series. And kids, you're about to find out how to find God's purpose for your life. How many adults would like to learn that as a kid? If you could rewind 10 years, 50 years, 80 years, say, I could learn my purpose as a kid. That's what those kids are doing. That's what your giving goes towards. That's what your serving goes towards. Also, we have takeaway cards from our host teams. They're going to be bringing them around. We have a lot of stuff to go through today. God has been downloading information to my mind this week, and I believe is going to set some people free. It's going to set some people free. Band, you guys are going to come play in just like a few minutes, so I'll, I'll, again, I'll let you all go. Isn't this band good? Yeah. Incredible talent, incredible heart for the Lord, and I absolutely love it. I love it. So today, we're talking about a topic that's not as easy as joy or love. We're talking about how to defeat temptation. And I just felt, and whenever I said that word came out of my mouth, I just felt like a, a little bit of resistance. And if your ears have felt a little bit of resistance to that, you don't have to say yes, because that means you probably need to pay attention today. But it means that, honestly, it's a topic that Satan doesn't want us to learn, because sometimes temptation is what Satan's trying to do in our life to derail us from what God wants in our lives. So today we're on part five, how to defeat temptation. If you're following along in the book, this will be days 26 and 27 this week. Our bottom line for today is you can overcome temptation by clinging to God's word. Pretty simple. That sounds like something that would be taught back in Viz Kids because it's very simple. It's true. It doesn't need to be more complex. You can overcome temptation by clinging to God's word. So whenever I was doing some research this week, I was honestly just asking God, like, why in the world do we even have temptation? I don't know about you guys, but I like to have those conversations with God where I'm just real sometimes. I say, God, why is there temptation in life? Why can't things just be good all the time? Well, first of all, whenever we get to heaven, there won't be temptation anymore. We'll be with the Lord. We'll be in heavenly places with the Lord. But every temptation provides an opportunity for growth. It's refinements. And whenever you are tempted, you grow as a person. Character is never just found, it's always formed. You, you've never met someone with great character who just came out of the womb with it and was great from birth. Someone who has great character had to form it through time and through temptations and through trials. And again, it's not fun, but honestly, that's just the truth of it. There are trials and there are temptations here on earth because God wants to grow us. I do want to point out, like I said in small group uh, part one online, God will never tempt us. James says that God tempts no one, but God can allow Satan to tempt us. But the temptation does not come from the Lord. And I, have, and I will have to say, some people are like, well, 
why in the world do we have to actually fight against temptation? Well, it's because we come from a sin instinct. You're not good just as you are. You're only good whenever you're renewed in Christ. That's going against what the world says. It's going against the postmodernism belief of a false doctrine saying that, hey, it's okay, everyone's fine, all religions are good, sounds like coexist, everyone's all good. No, Jesus Christ said, I am the only way to heaven. We have to reject postmodernism, and actually we're going to look at the meta narrative of the Bible. So I feel like a teacher, I got me a little laser pointer, I use this with my cats. But I was going to put up this image of the meta narrative of the Bible, creation. That's what took place in Genesis 1 through 2, whenever God made everything and he rested on day 7. Right here, the fall. That's where we're going to spend a lot of time today. That's whenever the serpent came into the Garden of Eden, tricked Eve, and then Adam and Eve both ate from the forbidden tree of good and knowledge. And that's what ultimately shifted everything for us. And if you can actually leave that image up there, uh, we're going to go back into that in just a second. Redemption, Matthew 27 and 28. I'm going to be honest, guys, the enemy's been messing with, with our pro presenter this week. We have some, some issues with it, but no matter what, Christ will be preached. So we have redemption, which is slide number three. Either way, that's in Matthew 27, 28, whenever Jesus died and he rose again, and he therefore made up for, hey, there we go. Good job, guys. That tech team rocks, man. They, they never, let anything, ne never let anything slip. Redemption is whenever Jesus died and rose again, and we are awaiting the new creation phase whenever we are made right with Christ. What does all this mean? Number one, I paid to go to Liberty University. I wanted to at least learn something and share it with you guys for the money it cost. But number two, it's that because of this fall and because of the redemption, there is a gap in between here and here, and we're living right here. Our sin is what caused the fall. Christ's redemption is what allows us to be a part of the new creation. But even though the redemption saved us spiritually, we're still going to have temptations in this world because of the fall. So through this, God allows the fruit of the Spirit to grow in your life by sometimes allowing you to experience the exact opposite of those circumstances. Let me give you a few examples. Number one, love. It is easy to love this person. I'm just going to put that first picture up there. That's one of my favorite people on the whole planet. Whenever you finish waiting through the whole line at Chick-fil-A, which they're quick anyway, it's only two minutes, but by the time you get there, look, see, that's even me in the car. They took that picture of me, and I said, man, whenever that person hands you the food, it is impossible to be rude to that person. Do you agree? You get that number one, no pickle. It's phenomenal. But what about this next picture? What if the waiter accidentally forgets to submit your food order, or it comes out cold, or they make a mistake? How are you going to treat the waiter? The young waiter, are you going to treat him like garbage? At that point, it's not always easy whenever something isn't as comfortable. And let, let me just go ahead and go off track here for a second. Whenever you're at a restaurant, if you get bad service and you leave a bad tip, that says nothing about them and all about you. Don't you dare claim to be a Christian and leave garbage tips at restaurants. That's a terrible witness for your faith because we need to be loved. We need to be generous. And, and whenever you leave a tip, it's not saying I approve of your service. It's saying I approve of you. If you've ever worked in the restaurant industry, you know that pain whenever someone either leaves you a bad tip or no tip, and then they leave you a church invite card beside it. That sort of cancels it out. It cancels it out. Okay, next up, with peace. It is so easy whenever you're watching a sunset saying, Lord, I feel so peaceful right now. You're not really tempted to not feel peace in that moment. But what about in this next situation? Whenever you get a two-week notice, you're fired, your rent's increasing, and the Holy Spirit's telling you, hey, I still want you to tithe. Trust me with tithing. And you're on the floor crying because you're saying, God, how in the world are these ends going to meet? Because I can't even see a way right now. Through that temptation of Satan saying, hey, you may not want to listen to God. You may need to stress out. That's where that character is built of peace. Finally, with patience. This picture right here. It is so easy to be patient whenever your order qualifies for more than $25 and it comes within three milliseconds to your front door. Which let me just say, if you have to add something else to your cart to make it come quicker, you usually buy some crap you don't need. Let's just be honest. You'll end up getting, oh, let me just get a new refrigerator while I'm at. Oh, actually, I think that TV's a little outdated. It's like two years old. Hey, but it, it'll come today. Your patience is not tested in that moment. But whenever you go shopping here... Has anyone ever shopped there before? Wish? Has anyone shopped at Wish before? Anyone in here? 
Okay, some people, some people. Wish is an overseas company that makes products for like pennies on the dollar, but you have to wait until next leap year for it to come because it's coming from across the ocean on a boat and it gets crashed into an island and stuck and your package never comes. And eight months later, you'll get a package in Chinese writing that or some other language you can't understand. You're like, oh my goodness, I forgot that I ordered this. And that moment, that's where your patience may be tested. I said some, all that's funny, but all jokes aside, whenever we're tested in life, the trials and tribulations that's whenever character is formed. Because you can't claim to have the fruits of the Spirit if you've never been tested. I can't say, yes, I'm faithful to my wife if I've never been tempted that way. I can't say I'm faithful to always give to the Lord if I've never actually tithed and went through that test of tithing even whenever it's tough. So the bad news, I'll be honest, guys, we're going to face temptation in life. I'm not here today to say if you just follow God it's all going to be great. We'll just put our arms around each other in a small group, smile, and you'll never have anything tough. The bad news is that we will have temptations in life. The good news, the enemy's stupid, and he's very predictable. It's very predictable how he works. It's all throughout Scripture. It's the same techniques. He uses nothing new. It's the same techniques over and over. And I dove into God's Word this week, and I'm going to expose him. He had some tricks up his sleeves, but today I'm going to make him wear a short sleeve shirt. We're going to look and see. Is that cool with you guys? Yeah, We're going to expose the enemy this morning. Heard it. Come on back there. So I want you to get out your takeaway cards. We have some stuff to write. We're in school this morning. We're in Old Testament history, Bible 105, section 4. Just mess with you guys. Listen up. I know it's a time change Sunday. The pathway to temptation. Oftentimes, sin is rarely occurred with just one move. Sin usually happens through a pathway. Number one is your weakness is targeted. If you work out every single day and your definition of taking an off day on eating healthy is having an extra side of carrots, the enemy's not going to test you by getting a bunch of fast food. I'm going to be honest. For me, I've tithed since I've been 12, 13 years old. The enemy's not going to come to me and say, I challenge you to not tithe this month. Because for me, that's just, been, uh, that's just been something that's just been ingrained in me. But something that the enemy may come at me with is saying, Emmaus, I want you to be a bad steward of your time and, and derail time and intentionality in your life. So, so the enemy is always going to target you in your weakness. And this is now. Yes, sir, I will. I will. And I want to say this could be an evil desire, such as murder, adultery, theft, or it could be a healthy desire, such as being loved. Do you know that? The enemy will sometimes target areas in your life that are weaknesses that are always not meant to be bad things. Something else in terms of weaknesses, I want you to be very aware of shortcuts in life. Usually shortcuts will end up to you falling into temptation. Cheating in school versus actually studying. Shacking up versus waiting to get married get-rich-quick schemes instead of using biblical principles to build wealth, usually whenever you take a shortcut, you're going to end up with a regret and falling into temptation. Number two is you're challenged with doubts. And I do want to point up, when that, I, want, I want to point this out. Whenever you're faced with temptation, that's not sin. You're not sinning just because you're being tempted. You're only sinning whenever you act on the temptation. So throughout these four Steps to temptation, these four, uh, the four pathways to temptation, one through three is not sin, four is sin. But so, so again, right here, we're not on sin yet, but you'll be challenged with doubts. And how do I know this? Because the serpent said to Eve, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Eve didn't just go from waking up one day to eating the forbidden fruit. She listened to a doubt, and her weakness was challenged. And I can just imagine she was like, well, you know what? Hmm, if God did give me everything, yeah. I, I see, I, how dare God say I better not eat from this? And see, what happens is that she let that seed take root in her heart. She was challenged with a doubt. The anonymous author in Hebrews 3.12 tells us to watch out. Don't let evil thoughts or doubts make any of you turn from the living God. This is important because whenever you let doubts get into your hearts, they can eventually lead you down this pathway to turn from the living God. Number three, you're persuaded with deception. It goes from weakness to doubt to deception. 
And this is dangerous because this is the last one among this pathway before you cross into sin. Point number three, persuade with deception. Because everything that Satan says is either a complete lie or there's some half-truth. And why would he do this? Not because he's trying to be kind, but he's trying to trick you. And this is why you need to know God's word inside and out, and you need to have accountability in your life so you don't always fall for the same tricks. Because if you don't know God's truth inside and out, it can come and get you. I'll give you some examples. This would be the enemy speaking. God doesn't need you to tithe. He's rich. Psalm 50 says that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. That's true. God does own the cattle on a thousand hills. Guys, if that, is that still flickering, that screen? Do you have an issue? Okay, cool, it's making sure. See, God can own the cattle on a thousand hills, but it's a half lie. God doesn't need you to tithe, but he wants you to tithe for your hearts. God says in Genesis 2 that it's not good for man to be alone, and God created sex, in, sex anyway. Just sleep with whoever you want. Do you hear that half truth in there? God said it's not good for man to be alone, but then he twists scripture. Go ahead and cheat on your spouse. God says in Romans 8 that he works all things together for good. That's not even the full verse. God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. But I want to say, if you've ever done something as far as cheating on your spouse, God can redeem that, but don't you dare listen to the enemy and take that as advice from God. Philippians 4.13 says you can do all things through Christ. So just bet on that sports team and your house will be paid off in two weeks. <laughs> Which is not even the full verse. Philippians 4.13 says that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Not that tears you down. And see, if you only know God's word through Instagram, if you only know God's word through the chosen, if you only know God's word through here in a small group, there's nothing wrong with Instagram, the chosen, or small group. But if those are your only sources, you're going to fall for these lies. You're going to look like a fool. You have to know God's word inside and out and put believers in your life. So whenever you hear a lie that's as dumb as those I just told you, you just reject that and take it out to the garbage can. Because now you've reached a pivotal moment. The, whenever your weakness was targeted, that's not sin. Whenever you're faced with doubt, that's not sin. Whenever you're persuaded with deception, that's not sin. But, but, but pathway number four is you step into disobedience. That's sin. One through three, okay, you can just sort of see the conveyor belt. It's taking you there. Are you going to hang on that conveyor belt long enough, or are you going to jump off before it brings you into four? Because what started as just an idea became a behavior. Because it got to your heart. James 1.14 says that we are tempted when we are drawn away and trapped by our own evil schemes. And it may sound tough, but I have at least some encouraging news for you. Jesus went through the first three. What? Correct. Jesus never sinned, but he, was, but he went through temptation on earth. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up to Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. We're going to put it up on the screen. This is usually more scripture than I actually use on the screen, but there's a lot of important principles that I want to pull out of here. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. Let me just pause. If I fast for one day, I'm what I would call very hungry. 40? Satan tempted him when he was faced, not with weakness, but when he was most vulnerable. And I, and I clarify that out of respect to the scriptures because God never, Jesus never had a weak point, but he was vulnerable in that moment. The enemy didn't come to him whenever he had a huge meal. The enemy came to him when he was hungry. For you, that may be the enemy comes to you whenever you're lonely. That may be the enemy comes to you whenever you're horny. That may be the enemy comes to you whenever you just lost your job. The enemy will come at you whenever you are most vulnerable. Verse 3, during that time, the devil came to him and said, If you're the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Satan tried to get Jesus to doubt God's love. Number two, but Jesus told him, No, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus didn't rebuke the enemy just using a cute quote he found on Pinterest Jesus, Jesus rebuked the enemy from Scripture from Deuteronomy 8.3 from the Mosaic Covenant, which ironically he was actually currently fulfilling in that moment. But he was using Scripture to combat what the enemy was trying to tempt him with. 
Isn't that something we should do in our lives? Not use cute quotes. Those are fine. But if you don't have scripture, you're going to fall for these tricks. Verse 5, then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, I'm just, I can just imagine using this voice. If you are the son of God, will the scriptures say, he will order his angels to protect you. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on the stone, which is quoted from Psalm 91, 11 through 12. The enemy knows scripture. What I just read came from Satan's mouth and what's recorded in Psalm 91. Just because it sounds like something that you've heard in the Bible doesn't mean it's always from God. It means it's true, but you have to check the context of who's speaking to you. Context is important. That verse is true by itself, but the enemy used it within the context to try to derail Jesus from his destiny. Satan tried to deceive Jesus by sharing a half-truth. The scripture was true. The intention was not. Because the, the context of Psalm 91 is about trusting God for safety, not challenging God. Jesus then responded, the scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you just kneel down and worship me. I just want to point out, the enemy will sometimes offer you things that he doesn't even own. He may try to put a lean on something, but he doesn't own it. Watch out for false compromises. Sleep with her, then I'll end up giving you just true love. Yeah, but you'll get a soul tie and STD and child support. Have your friend clock in early for you. You'll be rich. Yeah, they'll be fired for payroll fraud or embezzlement. Just plagiarize on that assignment. Then they'll give you more time for ministry. Then you get expelled and it ruins your reputation. And don't you think if you get expelled that, that Sally Mae is going away, she'll just, she'll just follow you wherever you go next, except for you just won't have no job. Whenever you take shortcuts, you get deceived by the Lord. I see Cindy crack. I love you, sister. When you get deceived, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. You don't get deceived by the Lord. Whenever, whenever you get deceived by the enemy, it always ends in regret. And I love how Jesus challenged this, and we should do the exact same. Get out of here, Satan. Jesus told him, for the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil went away, and angels came back and took care of Jesus. Jesus passed the first three steps of temptation by God's word, which allowed him to avoid the fourth step, which would have been a sin. <sighs> so what in the world do we do about this? <laughs> we got a lot on our hands, don't we? Because we're imperfect people. I want to say, first of all, there's no shame if you've ever fallen into temptation. We're all human. Again, because of the fall and, and the meta narrative of the Bible, of the whole story, We've all fallen short of the glory of God. So there's no shame. There's no condemnation. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, English Standard Version says, No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. NLT says the temptations in your life are no different than what others experience. I hope that at least encourages someone today. For young adults, in person and online, I have a newsflash for you. You're not the only young adult in the world that wants to have sex before marriage. I have newsflash for, for all, all the adults here. You're not the only adult that wants to be rich. Everyone else doesn't want to be poor, and you're the only one that wants to be rich. The temptations you face, others have experienced them and are experiencing them as well because we're human. Take the pressure off for a second. It's okay. I'm not normalizing sin. I'm just saying that God gives grace. Whew. So good. So I want to share a proven plan to fight temptation. It's overly simple. I spent time worrying this week. I'll be honest, borderline stressed this week that it was actually too simple because it's just a Bible verse, but which is good because it's low-hanging fruit. <laughs> James 4, 7, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I encourage you, if you are currently battling temptation, I want you to memorize this verse. Soak it in, know it inside and out. You can set it as the lock screen on your phone. You can put it on a sticky note in your car, beside your bed, beside your laptop, wherever. Memorize this verse because this is the proven plan to fight temptation. Number one is submit yourself to God. You can't say no to the devil if you've never said yes to the Lord. 
You have to submit yourself to God, which takes humility. You cannot overcome temptation in your own power. If you try, you will fail. People will laugh at you. You have to use God's power underneath his submission and leadership to overcome temptation. Joshua 24, 14 says to fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. If you don't have fear and all for the Lord, you're going to struggle. Number two is to resist the devil. Now, I want to be clear. This does not mean debate the devil. Resist the devil. Two arms length. Not, well, how about we come over here? Let's just have a conversation. Why don't you share your, your side of the story? And I'll, I'll share mine, and we'll see if we can come to an agreement. Coexist. <laughs> Garbage theology. Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And he says, resist the devil. Jesus wasn't having a commentary with Satan on the wilderness when he was being tempted. He just straight up resisted him. Whenever he started getting tempted, Jesus didn't say, well, I'm not really hungry. You know, I'm like, this isn't really like the best time for this temptation. Maybe, like, Nope. Stay. And if you don't have any scripture memorized, I got this from Dr. Warren in Purpose Driven Life. If you don't have any scripture memorized, then all you have is an empty magazine to your gun. I wanted to have a prop, but that won't be a prop. <laughs> What's happening, if you don't have any scripture, you're going to pull up to the scene. I went to Forest you, so I sort of grew up in like the hood. They said whenever you pull out your piece, plink. And back at Forest you, they'd say, you ain't got no bullets. I'm making this up, guys. You got to laugh. But on your spiritual journey, if you don't have even a single Bible verse memorized, yeah, you can pull the gun. It's just going to be a blank fire every time. And also, I encourage you, memorize scripture before the temptation. Because whenever you're tempted and you're focused on tab one is Pornhub and then tab two is Bible.com, I'm being honest, guys. If you have two tabs, oh, which one should I choose? It's too late. You need to have it in your heart where you know, I'm not even going to type that. I'm not even going to use my phone past a certain bedtime if I know that's a temptation in my life. Because I have scripture that says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. If you don't have any scripture, you're going to pull out that, that gun. You're going to pull out your Glock 17. And it's going to have a dummy round in it if it's a half truth from Satan. And number three, he will flee from you. He'll flee, guys. I guarantee it. Why? Because if God said it, you better bet I'm going to believe it. Matthew 4.11 says, Then the devil went away, and angels came and took care of Jesus. You know what happened? Satan gave up. He said, man, Jesus ain't budging. Well, I tried to tempt him here. No. I tried to tempt him here. No. I tried to tempt him here. No. Go away. And Satan went away. And guess what? If it happened for Jesus, it'll happen for you. If you cling to God's word and you submit yourself to God with humility, saying, Lord, I need your help in my life. You resist Satan at arm's distance, he will flee from you. I guarantee you. So now I want to share a proven plan to heal from mistakes. Everything I've shared so far is great information for future temptations. But what if you fell into temptation and have regrets 10 years ago? Or what if you're currently in it right now? Of course, the first step is to turn, give your life to the Lord, or rededicate your life to the Lord, and stop from here on out. But whenever I was preparing this week, uh, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Last night, Hannah was, Hannah was babysitting two kids. She was out until like 9 p.m., so I just had time. I sat on the couch with my laptop and my orange cat underneath a blanket. And I just spent time with the Lord. And what really pressed um, hard on me was for people who are carrying regrets today, for people who have fallen into temptation and shame is like a 45-pound weight that's tied around their neck. And I know people aren't cheering, people aren't shouting, but it was real heavy on my spirit. But I actually called up Pastor Matt last night, also known as Dad, and actually, I asked for permission to do something because it's 
really different. <laughs> Y'all got scared. <laughs> but it's something that will set you free. Because if you have regrets in your life, and you said, I should have never done that. I should have never invested in Bitcoin back in, in this time. And then, oh my goodness, my, my family's behind it. If I wouldn't have done that. I don't care what your regret is, big or small. There's a plan to heal from this. Because if you ask God to cleanse you, this is what forgives you. That's point number one for those of you who are paying attention on there. Ask God to cleanse you. Man can never do this. Your pastor can never do this. The worship team can never do this. A good feeling worship song can never do this. The chosen movie series can never do this. Only Jesus can do this. And I want to let you know, whenever you come to someone else and you confess your sins, that's not what forgives you. It's only the Lord that forgives you. But can I share something with you today that God really pressed on me last night? You can be forgiven and not healed. It could have been years ago, you gave your life to the Lord and said, yep, I'm not doing that anymore, God. Yep, I'm praying. I encountered you in my room on the floor. I'm, I'm making this up, but if you're there, yep, Lord, I encountered you. Thank you, God. I'm forgiven. I can go to heaven. My slate's been wiped clean. But you've just been carrying that around, and it feels like someone's just poking on your left and right chest 24-7, pushing. Have you ever felt that feeling? You can just sort of nod. You don't have to raise your hand. But there's a Bible verse that came to my spirit last night that will cleanse and heal you. James 5.16. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And then uh, go on in the verse, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Your sins are forgiven by coming to the Lord, but you are healed by talking to a brother or sister. You can't heal by yourself. So if you're dealing with hurt and shame, there are only two ways to overcome that healing that you need. Again, the forgiveness is through Christ. You are not forgiven by telling someone else. That's not what we believe. You're forgiven with the blood of Christ. Two ways that you can be healed. One, when we die, we'll go to heaven and everything will be made new. You'll never remember it. I promise you. But on earth, option number two is you tell someone else. And I just pondered this. I was like, God, why can't I do this by myself? Why can't I just really spend time with me and think about it, God? And I think God just revealed to me, honestly, just a moment ago, because that, to tell someone else, we have to overcome pride. Will you be humble enough to ask for help? And last night, before I closed this laptop, the Lord put upon my heart that there was something years ago that I was still carrying with me. And something currently where the enemy's tempting me in different areas of my life, and God clearly told me it would be extremely hypocritical for me to come up here today and preach this without calling someone else and, getting, and doing the exact same thing I'm about to ask you to do. So I called a friend who lives a couple hours away. None of you guys have ever met him before, and you never know, you'll probably never meet him. And I called him. I said, will you please just, I, 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 just, I just need to tell you something. And I, and I was honest with him. I said, I said, I didn't sin through this. I was just being tempted in this area. And through saying that, I felt like a gasket was just blew off and pressure was just released. But I feel like, I'm sorry, let me take it back. I know that I came on assignment today. It's different when you're here with a, an inspirational message. But when you're on assignment, you're here for a purpose. And God told me, I can't do this until I did what I'm about to ask you to do. Because I'm going to ask you to do something bold. I want our care team to come on up to the front, men and women, and if you have been dealing with temptations and regrets in your life, first of all, you need to pray and get right with the Lord. You need to ask God to forgive you with the precious blood of Christ. And second of all, this is what I called and asked for permission on, I challenge you to come up here and tell someone. This is not coming up to get for forgiveness. These people don't forgive you, but telling someone else will cleanse you and you will be healed. So what I'm going to challenge you to do 
I'm going to admit, guys, this is terrifying. Is that fair to say? Because when I had that phone call, it was something I never told someone before, and it was different. But what I challenge you to do, men only come up to men, ladies only come up to ladies, but I want you to pray and get right with the Lord for 60 seconds or so, and then I'm going to give a call for someone, if anyone has the faith, the courage, and the humility to come up here and tell someone. It's going to be private and confidential, and we, it, it matters so much to us. We even have microphones in the, that are designed to pick up crowd noise and applaud throughout the service. We're actually turning those off for this time right now. Go ahead and mute those. So whatever's set up here is completely confidential. But I challenge you to do something. When you tell someone, if you feel that pressure relieve, I want you to scream. Will you? If you feel that pressure relieved and you are healed, I want you to scream because of what God's doing in your life. And right now, I just want to pray over anyone who is just battling pride, saying that they don't feel like that they even need to come to someone, that they don't even need to tell God or tell someone else. I just encourage you just to lay it all down at the altar this morning. Jesus Christ died and rose again for you to forgive you. As Brother James gave us those instructions, that's how we're healed when we tell someone else. So right now, just for 60 seconds or so, I just want, I'm just going to be quiet, which is rare for me. I want you to get right with the Lord. With all eyes closed, all heads bowed, God, I just pray, and I thank you for your cleansing power, for your forgiving power. God, I thank you that you have more in the hem of your garment than the whole camp of the enemy, God. I thank you that one drop of the blood of Jesus is enough to wash over any guilt and shame in my life. And I thank you for your forgiving and cleansing power, Jesus. I thank you for that what you do on the cross is enough. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And right now, God, I pray that you build courage in these mighty men and women of God this morning, that they would have the courage to share something that they may have never shared before because the enemy has told them a lie that they're alone and they're the only ones who've ever dealt with that and that no one will accept them. But I just come to rebuke that lie in the name of Jesus Christ and say there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and that you can come clean today with talking to the Father and you can be healed today by talking to someone else. So I still want everyone's eyes closed. I'm going to count to three. And on the count of three, if you have enough courage and enough faith I'm going to ask you to stand up and come to someone and tell them, and I don't, I don't want to wish you wash. I mean, you shoot straight with them and say what you want to get off of your chest. And I'll be honest, if no one does it today, I don't care because I know that I completed my assignment by telling you what God wanted me to say. This isn't for me and my own gratification. My job is complete today because I delivered God's word to the best of my knowledge the way God wanted me to. Now it's out of my hands. It's in yours. It's in God's. So on the count of three, I challenge you to stand up and you're going to get healed today. One, two, three, three. Is there anyone today? Amen. Amen. We're just going to stay in this atmosphere of worship. And for those of you who are sitting down, I encourage you to pray for these people today. Pray for them. Pray for them from your seats. Pray for people's boldness for anyone who's still in the crowd today. Don't forget to shout if you're if you're healed. Beautiful. Jim. You join?
Who wants to go? Hannah, Sulena, Carrie, can y'all join? Can y'all, can y'all just be available? There could be more than one person at each. I believe there's more today. Come on, there's no shame. There's no shame. Beautiful. This is beautiful. Come on, is anyone feeling free? Is anyone feeling it? Come on. Come on, that pressure's relieved. Come on, is there anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? God's power is unlimited. Come on, brother. Jacoby, right here. I love it. I can feel that pressure relieved. I love it. I love it. I love it. This may be the boldest thing someone's ever done, but I challenge you. I challenge you today. I love it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, woman of God. Hallelujah. 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 She's free. Can I hear that shout? Ah! Come on. Come on. If anyone up here feels free, raise your hand. I'm going to come to you. Come on. Jeanette, let me hear it. Woo! Yeah. Is someone free over here? Let me hear it. Woo! Woo! Yeah. I love it. I love it. She just can't hold that inside anymore. Oh, I feel it off my chest. I feel it off my chest. Freedom is here. Freedom is here. Freedom is here. Freedom. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Hey, Malik. Malik. My brother in Christ. You better let him hear that. Yes, God. Ah! Jacoby, you got something? Yeah! Ah! Come on. Come on. Someone just got set free here in the blue. Someone just got set free. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Come on. Woo-hoo. That's good. That's good. Pastor, you have any words for us in this moment? You know I love this body, this flock, these sheep. And if you're sitting there thinking, no, oh, God could never, he could never help me get past what I'm thinking about what I'm going through. Yes, you can. You can right now. You can do that. Well, wait, it's still private. It's still confidential. 
this is your moment. In fact, if it's even anybody who came up here, anybody who's up here has something. You need to turn and find somebody else. This is your moment. This is your place. And God is working. Praise God for these screams. Praise God for Joni and that scream of victory right there. That's what God's doing. That's what God's doing. Thank you, Mayus. You want to lead us into, into worship? We hope that you enjoyed this week's message. If you just made a decision to accept Jesus, then congratulations. We would love to celebrate with you. Visit viz.church salvation, and we look forward to meeting you along with mailing you a free gift. We would love to have you join us for church in person or on the Vision Network this Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Head on over to viz.church slash RSVP to let us know you're coming. As always, we are here for you, and please contact our team if we can pray for you in any way. Thanks again for joining us, and God bless.